at UFC uh, Fight Night. No, UFC on Fox, pardon me. Maya versus Condit. Uh, prediction video time. Gonna go through the undercard at a very rapid pace because there's a lot of uninteresting fights. Um, but the main card does deliver. We are gonna break down one of the preliminary Fox cards in detail. So here we go. Alex Ricci versus Jeremy Kennedy, taking Jeremy Kennedy to win. He's an interesting prospect. Ricci's kind of a played out fighter who's in his mid 30s making it to the UFC. He is the bigger fighter, so maybe that comes into play, but tough call. Kennedy, probably more of a featherweight than a lightweight. Ryan James, Adam Hunter, Adam Hunter by TKO, taking Chad LaPriest to win a decision against Thibaut Goti in what should be a fight that's exciting and then gets kind of boring towards the end. Shane Campbell versus Felipe Silva, taking Shane Campbell to win a decision there, taking Alessio DiCirno, Chirico, pardon me, over Gareth McClellan by decision, and taking Kyle Botchniak over Enrique Barzola by decision. Somewhat interesting fight. Sam Alvey versus Kevin Casey in like the definitive middleweight fight of middleweightness. Um, Alvey is a counterpuncher to a fault in the sense that he doesn't really have a way of forcing you to, to do anything. And it can lead to important fights. And if you're not just aggressive, um, he tends to struggle with your lack of activity. You need to give him something to counter. To, and that's the point he's at. Uh, Kevin Casey, pretty good athlete when it comes to the uh, middleweight division. Really good grappler. Um, Stand-up is actually not bad on a technical level, but has a definitive lack of fighting spirit. He finds ways out when other fighters would possibly fight beyond that limitation. Um, as a result, I'm going to go with Albi by TKO. At some point, he's going to give Casey a reason to give up, and Casey is going to give up, and Albie's going to get the win. Um, it's a shame, because when you look at like physical gifts of what these fighters should be able to do, Kevin Casey is, is a far more interesting prospect than Sam Alvey, who's never really been all that interesting. From a fight standpoint, Alvey's an interesting individual, very um, amusing, very media-friendly, so on, but lives up to the names of uh, Smile and Sam Alvey a lot. But uh, just not a particularly athletic fighter and not a particularly technically gifted fighter either. So, in a way, kind of disappointing. Main card, Jim Miller, Joe Lozon in a rematch of a fight that happened some time ago with Jim Miller taking the victory. <sighs> I want to pick Miller, but the way he has looked lately is a very depleted man who... Probably is going to get TK out by Joe Lozano. He looks gun shy, like he doesn't want to pull the trigger. He doesn't look like he can take the fight, uh, take the trigger. And his once really, really, really solid cardio is gone. Um, that's the main reason why one would pick uh, Jim Miller over Joe Lozano because Lozano, not that Lozano's had bad cardio, but Lozano, the way he fights, which is very, very high output at the very beginning, it kind of. It beats you or he gasses through it. Like, I don't think there's a fighter who has a higher finish to decision ratio, honestly, in UFC history than Joe Lozon with the number of times he's been he, he's been finished or has finished someone. Um, he's only got one decision win, and that's over Mac Danzig. So that probably tells you all you need to know about that topic. Um, I'm going with Lozon to win a TKO. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Miller gets it done here by decision or by submission even. He's, he's a fantastic grappler. He's a, a good kickboxer, a, a pretty underrated wrestler. If he's got his cardio and he looks confident, this is a fight he I would normally pick him in, but he just hasn't looked that way in a number of fights now. Um, moving on to Paige Van Zandt versus Beck Rollins, our female fight for the night. I'm taking Van Zandt to win the decision. Beck Rollins is... A fighter with an okay athletic ability, good physical durability, um, a kind of cornucopia of skills that she doesn't really have a way of putting into like a full-on game plan. Um, she's willing to let the fight go wherever. And the problem with that is that a lot of fighters who, who say that and have that philosophy just don't really have a game plan in mind. They're going to let the opponent fight the fight, 
person that they want to fight. And if that's the case, Van Sant should be the better wrestler, should be the better scrambler, should be the better athlete, and should be able to win this fight. I do think Paige Van Zandt would be better served getting away from Team Alpha Male, just because if we look at the Team Alpha Male progression, they're very good at making ranked fighters, like top 10, top 5 even in their division. But very, but um, they're fighters that don't fundamentally change at any point. The depth of technical coaching they get isn't really there. The exception kind of was TJ Dillashaw, and the man largely responsible for that was Dwayne Ludwig, who's not there anymore. Um kind of the thing is I think Alpha Male is a great place to go to get your career rolling, but you need to go somewhere else to polish you off if you want to really be um, a title contender. Or a champion, I should say, because they do make title contenders. Uh, Joe Benavides, Chad Mendez, um, Faber himself, of course. Um, although Faber's title contention in recent times has not been what you would call... Um, Meritus. It's been more of the name value, but uh, still getting there. So there's that. Anthony Pettis versus Charles de Bronx Oliveira. I'm taking Showtime Pettis to win by TKO. Um, there is a lot of questions about this fight, though. Um, how is Pettis going to handle cut down to 145? Has Pettis learned from his mistakes? Has he developed technical things that close the gaps um, in his game? Uh, Pettis has been always kind of a victim of his own uh, success. He's a tremendous athlete, so he hasn't learned how to have a good technical process to his game. And people have been picking that apart lately, of course, with the Dos Anjos leading off into taking his title, the loss to Eddie Alvarez to a certain extent, uh, the Edson Barbosa fight, which was particularly surprising, um, and one that I thought he would win. But he should be able to win here. Oliver is... Exceptionally hittable. Um, he really does walk into your offense, and if you do that against Anthony Pettis, you should get finished at some point. So, Anthony Pettis, TKO. Uh, Demi Meyer versus Carlos Condit in a fight that's a little sad in the sense that both of these guys are on the downswing, and it happens to all fighters. In Maya's case, he's kind of looked up lately, like his cardio seems to have fixed itself a little bit which is good, because his cardio for a while there was very bad. Um, he can still definitely grapple for 15 minutes. Um, but this is a five-round fight, and do I think he finishes Carlos Condit? Um, Damian Maya, a guy who, if we're being entirely honest, let's see here, his history in five-round fights. He went five rounds with Ryan LaFleur, but looked really, really bad. And LaFleur doesn't have the activity level of a Condit. Um, the loss to Jake Shields, of course, where his cardio actually looked okay, but lost that fight. Anderson Silva, of course, in a bizarre fight. So that's kind of his five-round history. If this were a three-round fight, I would pick Car I would pick Demi Meyer to win. I think Carlos Condit is easily to is easy to take down. Um, it always has been. Um, his wrestling is not solid uh, defensively. But what he does is he, he does make you work. He is a decent enough grappler to not get auto-subbed by Maya. I think he drags him to the deeper waters and finishes him in the fifth round because Maya has never really had cardio for five rounds. Never. And if Condi can survive, and don't get me wrong, there's a good chance that he can't, but if he can survive the first three rounds and not get subbed, he should be able to finish Maya later on because Maya is a very hittable... His chin is good, but he's very hittable, and when he gets tired, if you can combine tired with Condit's ability to throw great deals of volume, at some point I see a referee having to stop in, step in and stop the fight, but it's not going to be a... I'm, basically what I'm saying is a win for Condit, but not one where he looks impressive in, and that's unfortunate because he's, he's really in need of that. I mean... When you consider that, in my opinion, this guy should be champion uh, because he should have beaten Robbie Lawler. His only other impressive uh, outings recently is Thiago Alves, who is uh, not really anything. And then the win over Martin Campman, I guess, is impressive, but it was kind of Campman's retirement bout. But losses to Tyron Woodley via injury, losses to Johnny Hendricks, losses to George St. Pierre, and then a very, very odd win over Nick Diaz. 
the last time I think we were really re we last time we left a fight really excited for Carlos Khan, it was probably back in 2011 when we beat DHK, uh, Stun Gun Kim. And that's it's a sad state of affairs when that is the case. But that's my thoughts on the card. It's a good card on the main card. On the undercard, there's a lot of filler here of guys that I don't think are going to really turn into a lot. We kind of know what Chad LaPriest is. We kind of know what Shane Campbell is. We know what Sam Alvey and Kevin Casey are. Maybe there's something to Barzola or Bochniak or DeChirico or um, Adam Hunter, I guess. Jeremy Kennedy is like kind of my hope of a prospect to come out of this, but... But it's a free card. So what you gonna do? So enjoy that. There's also Bellasaur, Benson Henderson versus uh, Pitbull, uh, Patricio um, this week. So that's also a good fight. So not a bad week for MMA for all stands. So enjoy. And uh, I don't know. That's it. <laughs>